So the tool that I would like to introduce is called Kickstart. Now, uh, for a lab, we have like 60, 100 machines and we'll need to install OS on all the machines. Now, uh, as Sir mentioned, uh, we had to reinstall OS on around 70 or no, around 60 machines on one night. So uh, it is because of this tool that we were able to manage to do this because one by one going into 60 machines and installing overnight, giving the user inputs all the time, going around with the CDs and DVDs is not really a practical thing. It's a very boring task as well. And uh, so what this tool does is, yeah, so when you boot into the CD or into the netboot installation of Linux, you can actually give one additional parameter called kickstart, ks is equal to a kickstart file. Now, uh, there is a tool called system config kickstart. That's a package that you can install in Ubuntu. And if you start that tool, then you will get uh, this window. So basically, you can give answers to the different questions that will be asked during the Ubuntu installation. And um, the first thing is the keyboard, mouse layout, and the language support, the target architecture, the installation method. Here, you can actually specify uh, the HTTP location of the installation source. And that way, you can avoid running around with CD. And then bootloader options, partition information. Here, you can create the partition table structure that you want to create for all the systems the network configuration. So this authentication is not actually implemented in this uh, particular tool. But uh, yeah, so we can create a root password and root account, firewall configurations. So and finally, there is a post installation script phase also. And the So one kickstart file that is created out of this would look like this. Yeah. Kickstart file that's generated out of it. Now, uh, so at the end, in the post stage, you can actually specify all the post installation, package installations and configurations that you would have manually done. And there is more things to show that because of the time limitations we are uh, just limiting here, we would give you references to the detailed manual through which you can set up a deployment server using the Kickstart tool. There are a few more components which is required, a TFTP server, a DHCP server, and an Apache server with which you can actually host the host this Kickstart file and the installation files. And only thing that you have to do is, once you set up the deployment server, just start the other systems and boot into the network. It will automatically start installation and finish the rest of it automatically. The first step is to set up this uh, Kickstart, uh, what do you call it? The deployment, deployment server. server. And these instructions were for creating the deployment server. So that's a one-time task. And after you create the deployment server and it is running, for all the other machines in your lab, you have to first boot them, do a network boot of the D uh, DHCP deployment server. And then they, can, uh, they will load the OS from there. So that's the basic uh, principle of this kickstart system. So all the manual effort is um, for all these options is one time. And later on, you go to each machine and start the boot process. And after that, everything just runs through. You don't have to do anything more. You can go away and let it run. Uh, once, once this installation is done, still we have the task of setting up all these softwares. Uh, the Eclipse, uh, PG Admin 3, Postgres, SQL. We had to install all these in all the machines in which these uh, installations were done. So, which itself was a difficult task. I mean, you had to, uh, if we did not have this tool, we, ha we would have to uh, either go manually on all the machines and run all the uh, installation tasks for each of the softwares, or we would have to write scripts to do each of the to do the installations. But uh, with the help of this Puppet configuration management tool, which is developed by Puppet Labs, we could do all of these in about 10 minutes. Like, so Puppet is a tool which is designed by the Puppet configuration Puppet Labs. Uh, and what it basically involves is setting up a Puppet server. Uh, this server is called as the Puppet Master. 
and all the other machines uh, in the lab are uh, puppet clients. Uh, they uh, they are basically connected to the puppet sir to the puppet master. In the puppet master, we have a configuration file where we edit all, uh, where we maintain a track of all the software installations that need to be done on all these machines, and then uh, the puppet client it asks the puppet master it requests the puppet master to uh, uh, check uh, for whether it needs to do any installation or any upgradation uh, so that softwares uh, which are not present in it can be installed so what it does is the default time is 30 minutes so every day for all these routine tasks that you need to automate uh, you just need to specify the puppet uh, in the puppet master in the puppet.con file and uh, etc slash default slash puppet file. You just have to specify uh, the demo of which we'll just show. Uh, yeah. So on, hello. So on, actually if you see this diagram, so you can able to understand clearly. So this host one, host two, host three is like our uh, lab machines. So we have some 200 plus machines over the lab and that puppet server, so th uh, that is called puppet master. So if the host like uh, want to install some packages, then it will contact the puppet server and it will install uh, every packages. So I'll show some demo actually. There are some installation procedures given here. So actually we thought to install and show all the demo, but there is no time. So I'm just going that uh, just last step. So here, uh, so here is the requirement of this DBMS workshop. So we need to install Postgres SQL and PG admin and uh, some editors like Vim and all. And also we need to create users uh, DB, uh, DBP workshop and copying some software folders to their desktop. So all those things we just, so in that puppet master, there is one file site.ppp. So this is the configuration, main configuration file of the master server. So here we will add open JDK and uh, PG admin uh, and Postgres SQL and also creating users and copying some software to their home directories like that. So we are just, doing. so in the client you can check. So in the client you have to run just proper type and iPhone test. No, no, nine point one. But this is ten point zero four. This proper no, master and client. That you have created. So, so it will install eight point four. So you have to do proper D iPhone iPhone test. So this is the command in the client side. You have to run this command. Then it will contact uh, master server and ensures that all the packages are present. If we don't do this, uh, then by default, uh, it will keep asking for uh, after every 30 minutes whether it needs uh, to change something, whether it needs to get any software, whether the configuration that it has now is different from what it needs to be there on the machine or something. So if we want it instantly, then we need to run this. Otherwise, by default, it is configured so that after 30 minutes, it will keep asking the puppet server. Yeah, it automatically asks the server. Actually, there is one error. There is something. So now it will run. So now it's installing. So you can see. Link on packages will be sent during installed. So there was no Vim on the Puppet client machine. So after uh, we ran this, it contacted the Puppet master. It checked uh, and it found out that it needed to uh, to install a package called as Vim. So, and it installed it uh, using the apt-get method. Similarly, we can have it for uh, custom installations as well. If we, this was just for the uh, apt-get installation packages. If we need, it, need to do it for uh, installing through source files also, then we'll have to write a exec uh, execute method if it is there. 
we need to write a execute block in that we need to specify all the parameters that is the working directory the name of the source file the way to get the source file and uh, how to go about the installation and it will do all those things it is yeah we'll upload this on the yeah, yeah, sure. we'll upload. yeah and we at the end we have some uh, tutorials good tutorials to begin with if you want to set this up so Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ubuntu 13.0. We separately have to set up that uh, configuration file in the Puppet Master. Only thing is for every version uh, of the operating, uh, for every version that the change occurs, we just have to configure the master file in the master same way. File. And uh, for apt get, we just have to change the repositories from where it fetches. That's it. Okay. Thank you. So right now it's uh, the DBP workshop user is created and package open JDK is created. I mean installed and Postgres SQL is installed. So you can see by, by this output. And also no, I mean no need to run this command in uh, client side. So it, I mean it will automatically check every 30 minutes to server and make ensure every package is installed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Why don't you just make a bootable USB drive, install everything there, and just distribute those USB drives? Yeah, you're suggesting we have a bootable USB drive which we distribute. So this is a better thing than that because that is a one-time yes. solution. So uh, supposing tomorrow another workshop comes up with a new requirement, you again have to go through all of this. So now if you want a bootable USB which contains all of this, uh, the problem is that uh, today you have one OS version, tomorrow you have another. So I think what is more important is that you see the instructions on how to do this, well. and then you can do it in your lab. Yes. And it's important to see that this is actually relatively straightforward. So there is some learning curve initially. You have yes. to understand the format of these commands and so forth. Yes. But once you have taken that step, yeah. managing a very large lab is pretty easy. Okay, maybe. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Sir, uh, during that uh, kickstart deployment server, there is something partition process. And that deals with some client machine, I think, I suppose. I mean, some information need to include there about the client machines, and the partition information, something. Regarding the? Kickstart deployment yeah, server, yeah. you mentioned. There's some partition information. Yes. And you need to, uh, I think, uh, go for some client machines information there. So can you give some details about that? What we need to give in the partition uh -huh. Partition information, right. So for, uh, for a Linux installation, at, at the minimum, we need a slash partition. So at least one partition is required. And then for proper working, it is suggested we need a swap partition as well as a uh, slash boot partition which contains the kernels. So uh, what we do in our labs is we have a slash boot partition, a, sla a swap partition, and a slash partition. Apart from that, uh, we have fixed size for these three partitions. Mm -hmm. And for the there is a fourth partition which accommodates the remaining space. So uh, using that tool, we can actually specify that take the remaining space and allocate it to the extra partition. And that way, you can use the same configuration for different machines having different partition, uh, different hard disk sizes. OK, OK. Any other questions? Hello. Sir, uh, is it compulsion to have the PXE boot machine? Uh, we have to enable PXE boot on uh, each and every client? Uh, so for clients, we need to use the way, uh, boot from LAN. So PXC boot should be there. OK. So, but I all of the new machines have uh, that facility. You can boot from LAN for most of the new machines. So whether we have to uh, provide some parameter uh, uh, for PXC no, booting no, no, or nothing. automatically it will uh, take that uh, Puppet Master uh, IP? Uh, Puppet is a different thing. Yeah, so definitely. But it is running on some uh, IP. Uh, yeah. from where it's going to take all the parameters? Uh, so actually, 
for OS installation for a new machine, once you have set up the deployment server, you just have to press F12 for the new machine that you want to install. Yeah. One, once it starts. So when, when you plus, press F12, it will boot into the network and then the deployment server will have a TFTP server and a DHCP server which will assign the IP and provide the uh, boot informations. And after the installation is done, then only the puppet comes into the picture. Okay. So after the installation is done, we should run the puppet client on all the machines. And in the kickstart file, we can specify the uh, that the puppet client should be installed and configured. So after that, it's pretty straightforward. There were a few tips in the presentation. I couldn't present the presentation. Uh, there are a few more things that you should ideally do. You should create an RSA key pair and push the, all the uh, push the public key onto the new machines so that you can SSH into all the machines from that deployment server easily. So these are certain things that will actually help you run a large lab. If you want to shut down all the machines, then you, you can run a command from the deployment server and you don't have to give password for each and every machine. And okay. certain such tips were there. Okay, one more question. Uh, uh, where we have to uh, provide the repository details uh, on uh, the master unit only or uh, we have to uh, give the details on uh, clients also? So that uh, package repository you are saying, yeah, I'm asking. So about that is on client only. So master just uh, give the instruction to client. So I mean, so these are the softwares you need to install. Then client, it will get installed through by its own repository. Like it will go to that uh, sources dot list file and it searches and it will install. So it's on puppet client only. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, Ranjit just mentioned the repository configuration for Puppet and for Kickstart also, for installation you have to specify from where the files has to be taken. And either you can copy a, an Ubuntu CD or DVD into the deployment server and host it via HTTP okay. via the Apache server and then uh, in the Kickstart configurator you can specify that location as the installation source. Or if you have a local APT mirror then you can specify that as the source. Uh, uh, can you provide some uh, uh, details that how to create the APT mirror locally? Uh, it's actually a pretty straightforward thing. You have to install app. Do, you have to do app to get install uh, app APT mirror, and there's an app. Uh, there's an apt mirror dot conf file that you have to configure. There are two. These are the two steps. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. The only thing is, in order to copy a repository from the main server, it's like. 40, 50 GB for a for the entire repository. So you should have the bandwidth and time to complete the download. Or you should copy the repository from somewhere and then keep on updating it. Okay. Thank you.